Hi, my name is Jacqueline Mazzoni. I'm so grateful you were able to join us today. Dean has an incredible message for you. Let's go ahead and jump on over. You all sound so good. Hey, open up your Bible app, or if you have a physical Bible, open it up. We're going to start in the, the Old Testament. But I've got a lot of scriptures this morning, so don't get discouraged if you can't get to all of them. <laughs> At the end of the experience today, we're going to receive a second offering for our new program that we're doing for fentanyl awareness. God gave us the best drug dealer in the state of Washington, in Dyrell, and he's now, he's now a Jesus freak, so he's the best person in this state to talk to young people about uh, some of that stuff. So our, our kids can live to, make, to see the day they can make better decisions. Because the thing about fentanyl is it kills people before they realize how stupid they are. And we gotta reverse that curse, right? So I've been encouraging people. I know money is so tight for everybody, but maybe you could give an extra $58 a month for that program. And I picked 58. Because 20 years ago, somebody gave me a book about the 58 blessings in the Bible. And uh, I got attached to that idea. So whenever I need a breakthrough in something, I usually write a $58 check. I'm not prescribing this for you. You know what a prescription is. It's where somebody in authority writes something and you say, take these or else, right? Uh, this is not a prescription, it's a description. I'm describing to you what I do, and because it means something to me. I, I say, God, I need a blessing in this category of my life. And so I'm gonna sow a little seed for a blessing for my kids or for a blessing for my business or something like that. Blessings are interesting. They are a glimpse into your future. Today I'm gonna to talk about three of those things. The first one is abundance. Everybody say abundance. The, the second one is confidence. The, this is a participation church, by the way, if you're a guest here. The second one is confidence. The third one is deliverance. Those are three blessings that you can find in the Bible. They are promised for every Jesus person. Not just promised for the saints. It's not just promised for the apostles. It's for everyone who calls themselves a follower of Jesus. I was on a trip recently, and uh, before my flight home, I had about a half day free. And so I like to sometimes, when I'm out and about, I think, oh, I should, instead of sitting here and just watching TV, because TV is the same no matter where you're at, uh, I, I thought, I, I need to get out. So should I go to a museum or should I go, what's a local attraction? Something like that. And then I had an idea. So I got on my phone and I found the closest Apple store. And I love Apple products. And I scroll down and they have a little thing where you can have a 30 minute orientation on the new Apple Vision goggles. Wave your hand if you've seen this. Okay, so I've seen some stuff on, on Instagram and Facebook where you know people wear these goggles and it's kind of a virtual reality thing. And my first response, and it's 3,500 bucks by the way. So my first response is, bah! you know, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. You see these people walking or sitting in restaurants and they're waving because they're, they're having this experience, you know. But then I thought, you know, I'm going to go try these things. And here was my thought. Because I keep reading about artificial intelligence and other things. And I thought I may not buy those goggles, but I have a feeling that this technology is part of my future. Do you get it? Say, I get it. So I went over there, I sat down, there was a young lady, she was about seven years old, and she, it seemed like, 
and she knew everything about everything. And she's talking to me like I'm an I'm an old idiot. So she's unbelievable. Uh, I'm like 15 minutes in, and I'm sold. Right? This stuff is so awesome. You, they they have this video that's like a IMAX experience, and you f you look down and you look off a cliff and you feel like you're gonna fall off the. It's just so cool. And then I, I'm doing this in the middle of the store, right? Because I'm writing a document. And then I do this and I move the document away. This is so cool. After my 30 minutes, my 30 minutes felt like 30 seconds. I finish and I pick up the phone. I call my brother and I said, dude, you got to do this. And then I hang up with my son and my daughter. And I say, you got to do this because it's a glimpse into your future, technologically. Now, here, here's where I'm going with this. When you read a blessing in the scripture, it's not a technological glimpse into the future, but it is a, it is a spiritual glimpse into your future. This is what's promised for you. And the thing about technology is, when you're experiencing, when people are talking about a technology you're going to experience someday, everybody say someday. One more time, someday. The problem with someday is we, it's so far out there, we're like, oh, sure. We're all gonna have flying cars. And we, I can barely get the car I'm driving to start, so why do I care about a flying car someday? Everybody say someday. <laughs> but it's good to know, because you realize, I know I'm trying to get this car to start, but there are people and plans working right now upstream that are coming downstream to me. And one day I'm going to enjoy this. I don't picture in my life, here's the great thing about promises and uh, learning about your own future is you're reminded that you're not stuck in today. We're all moving toward tomorrow. In, in regard to the promises of God, the destination that God has spoken over you, and you're, you're about to say, he doesn't know me, how can you say that? You don't know, just trust me. Are you a Jesus freak? If so, say, I am. I am. All right, then this is the destination God has for you. And when I say destination, uh, I picture getting on a plane and I say, hmm, I get on this plane and I say to myself, I wonder where we're gonna end up. Is that how it goes? That's not how it goes. You say, I get on this plane because I know it's going to New York City and I want to go to New York City. And if you don't want to go to Edmonton, don't get on the plane to Edmonton. And yet so many people live their life like, I hope life works out. You can hope your life works out. I'm gonna plan on mine working out and I'm gonna count on God's blessings. And the first blessing, and the blessing that I believe sets, like this is where the plane is gonna land, is called abundance. Say it with me, abundance. It means more than enough. And it's not about money. I know it's not about money because there are lots of people with more than enough money and they still kill themselves. They still swallow the bullet. They still use drugs and alcohol. You say, well, maybe if I had more pleasure. Well, I saw in the newspaper that two pornography stars overdosed this week. So it can't be in a, just abundance of sexual pleasure. If it was, those would be the happiest people on earth. Well, maybe it's power. Check it out. Do the people who hold power right now seem to be the happiest people alive? Man. Abundance is not just what you have a harvest. Abundance is the seed you have in your hand, the stuff you're planting right now that's going to be a harvest, right? We don't hope for things we already have. This is a great truth. We don't hope for things we already have. If you have a hope in your heart, that's because at some level you don't have that thing and you're believing that it could happen because you've seen it happen for other people. Deuteronomy chapter 15, here's what it says. The Lord your God will, will, is that future tense, present tense, past tense? Future. future, he's gonna do it, he will. The Lord your God will 
bless you as he has promised. I'll say it again. The Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. You, 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 you broke you, you unemployed you, you lonely you, you just trying to get sober you. You will lend money to many nations. When, God, when, when the prophet spoke this over Israel, they didn't even have their own country. They didn't have their own territory. So if they, he can speak stuff over them before they've even started, God can speak over you. He says, you're gonna, you're gonna have so much, you're gonna help other nations. They weren't even a nation themselves. And you'll, you will never need to borrow. You will rule over many nations and they will not rule over you. Ruling is not about having a plush life. Ruling is about having authority to change things. You're, and you can't, if you don't have any authority, you just gotta live with everybody else's decisions. But you're not gonna be like that. You're gonna have an abundance of authority. So we don't have to lament, oh, these kids, what am I gonna do about these kids? Well, whose kids are they? They're your kids. And you have authority. The devil wants you to think that you, it gets you to opine about everybody else's kids and feel helpless about yours when you should be doing the exact opposite. You should be training yours and praying for everybody else's. Right? So you're going to have authority. Here's what Deuteronomy there goes on to say, the next verse here. The Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. He'll give you many children. That's not about the physical act of having kids. There are people in this room who have never had kids and they've got many children because it's about legacy. God will bring a legacy through you. He doesn't have to bring it through your uterus. He brings it through your soul, okay? He says, I'm gonna bring lots of people through you and you're gonna have a, a great uh, legacy of a, a system. Livestock is just like a, uh, it's a cash machine in, a, in the ancient days, right? God's going to set up systems so that you can be a blessing to other people. He'll cause your fields to produce abundant harvest, for he will delight in being good to you. Isn't that good? Abundance. Abundance. This, this is a, an important thing to ponder, because so much of us, we're so obsessed about the harvest we don't have. And the devil wants you to, uh, how did the old saying go? That, you, that we often overestimate what we can do in a day and we underestimate what we can do in a lifetime. We go like, well, I can't change this overnight, so I guess I'll give up. It's just a lie from the enemy. It's a lie from the enemy. It was just get us feeling powerless. It's just like, oh God, this marriage sucks. Well, whose marriage is it? Are you in it? Who's in charge of that marriage? You're at least half of it, right? You can't change his part, but you can change your part, can't you? No? Oh, okay, I guess I'll give up. Um, <laughs> abundance, everybody say abundance. Here's the second thing. Confidence, say it with me. Confidence, confidence. I'll give you a little party trick to seem smart. If you figure out, you don't have to know everything. Just figure out a few tricks. Lots of people think I'm smart, but the trick is I went to Mount Tahoma High School. So I can barely count, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you do know like little prefixes, like the beginning of words, suffixes, the end of words, you can seem smart because you kind of know what words mean. You could spot it. And a prefix is something at the front of a word that changes the meaning or morphs the meaning. And in Latin and Latin languages, whenever you see C-O-N, it always means with, right? Consensus. It mean, consensus is when we get together with others and we agree, right? Uh, concluding, that's when we all agree it's over right? Confidence is with fides, another Latin word. And fides, like if you've ever heard the phrase, 
bona fides. What are his bona fides? What are his, that means with belief. What, are, what does he believe? Um, like bona fides, bone just means like B-O-N, like bon appetit, yes? What does bon appetit mean? Have a good meal, it means good. So, so uh, bon voyage means get the hell out of here. Isn't that what that means? No, what does it mean? It means have a good voyage, bon voyage. So when we get to confides, uh, it just means with belief, fides, fides, this idea of uh, deep belief. So abundance is a journey. That's my, where I'm going to land the plane. But confidence is how I make the journey. I make it confides. I make it with confidence. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and it tells you how to have confidence. Because some people will say, get a Lambo, you'll have confidence. Get a custom-made suit, be beautiful, have a bunch of plastic surgery, have a million dollars in the bank. But it's, this is what they said. They said, we carry this confides, we carry this with belief in our heart. Why? Because we have union with Jesus before God. It's not us. In fact, it goes on to explicitly say, we don't see ourselves as capable enough. Anybody here who doesn't see themselves as capable enough? Hands? A bunch of us. Like, how can I raise kids? I'm still a kid myself. How can I lead a church? I'm barely saved myself. <laughs> you know, you, you get it. We're, we're all struggling. It's, it, what, what does the world call it? Um, imposter syndrome. Have you heard of imposter syndrome? That's where you walk around and most people identify that they occasionally feel imposter syndrome because people walk in the door and they go, what do you, you know, what do you think I should do? And you're like, God, I can barely get my lawn mowed, you know? And people kind of, no, we don't live with imposter syndrome because we didn't count on our being good enough. We counted on him being good enough. I'm here just like you are. And the only confidence that I have today is that I know I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I've been walking with Jesus long enough that amazing things have happened. I met a young man a couple of weeks ago. He may be here today. I don't know. But I do my own grocery shopping because I'm, I'm a modern man and <laughs> perfectly capable of caring for myself. And if you believe that, but I do have an app called Instacart. And so I honestly, I cannot remember the last time I went grocery shopping except for Instacart and I ran on the food. So I get on the app, and about a half an hour later, this handsome young man comes to my door with groceries. If you're a single woman, by the way, you should try Instacart, because you meet <laughs> just a good-looking kid. And I'm like, all right. Uh, and uh, he handed me my groceries. I said, thank you very much, and I start putting my groceries away. And I thought the encounter was over. But about 10 minutes later, I see out of the corner of my eye, there's somebody standing at the door. So I walk over to the door. And this handsome young man um, says, I know this feels weird, but um, after I drove away from your house, something told me I should go back. And um, that's my wife in the car. She's pregnant with her first child. And I got laid off from a job. And uh, I don't even know why I'm doing this. But here's my card. I'm a contractor. If you ever need anything or whatever, I don't know what you do. He didn't know who I was. And he felt awkward about it, handing me his card. I said, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And I said, I'll do that. And he left. I'm sure it was a weird experience for him. The next day, 
I was here at church and a contractor came up to me and said, um, I, I lost one of my key guys, if you ever know of anybody. And I went, <laughs> so, aren't I smart? Is that the lesson of the story? <laughs> the lesson is not, aren't we smart? The lesson is, isn't God amazing? Confides. People say, how do you operate with so much confidence? I just had enough people walk back up to my door and say, I don't know why I'm here. I've had it happen in taxi cabs and airplanes and Instacart people. I've had it happen in department stores. Confides, with belief. Not belief in Dean, but belief in him. So I called that kid up afterwards and I said, hey, this guy's gonna call you. And we got together on Friday. I took him for a drive, showed him some stuff going on in the city. And uh, you know, he, he was just like, this is so amazing. I don't even know why I went back to your door. And, and I'm like, I know why you went back to my door. Divine appointment. And I have a confides that you're here for a reason. There are a lot of people who didn't make it this morning. Yeah. They, will, they made it because they have a mood. And the mood is, oh, wake up. Oh, sucks. I lost an hour. Oh, oh man. I just want to stay in bed, stay warm, or whatever. Because what are they doing? They're, they wake up and they look at their life as the harvest. Your life, we're not to harvest. Your harvest is abundance. And we're not to abundance yet. They're, and so they stayed home today. They, they woke up and said, I am discouraged. It's like walking into the room and going, it's a little cold in here, and then living with it. Who's in charge of the temperature? We are. We are. You know, it's like the guy who makes his own lunch and then complains every day at noon, this stuff stu sucks. It's like... You made your own sandwich, brother. If you don't like it, don't eat it. Better yet, if you don't like it, don't make it. So, people wake up and they opt out because of a current mood. There are other people, and I'm looking at them right now. They woke up and they saw today, not as a harvest, but as a seed. And they got up confides, with belief, that if I get up and I drive 20 minutes to that place, maybe God could do for me what I've seen him do for others. And so you kind of put yourself in the car and you drive there and you spend gas money that you can't afford today for a future where you're going to have enough for your gas and other people's gas. Because you walk with belief. With belief. Here's the thing about that kid coming to my door. He had nothing in his hand. He has a pregnant wife in the car and he's hustling. But what does he have in his heart? Right. This little something that said maybe that something, something about that guy. So he's knock, knock, knock. The knock is his seed. The knock was his seed that opened up a door for a future he couldn't picture yet. Right now, he's trying to picture a very close future. It's like, how am I gonna care for this baby? But that guy is gonna own homes. He's gonna travel the world. He's gonna have five kids, right? He's, uh, this is, he, he, he's got stuff coming he can't even picture. I remember when I was 21 and my mentor, my mentor went to Seoul, Korea, and I picked him up at the airport. And <laughs> I said to him, man, I would love to just once in my life go to Seoul, Korea. That would be so amazing. And he looked at me and he said, Dean, you're going to travel all over the world. I, I was making $14,000 a year when he spoke that over me. <laughs> to go to Seoul, Korea would have been half my income. <laughs> well, what was he seeing? I was looking at what I had in my hand. He was looking at the harvest I was going to get over time. Because he had lived it. He walked with a confides I didn't have. 
I didn't have that belief. But when he spoke it over me, I said, that's me. And sure enough, now I can walk with confides, with belief. Here's the last one, deliverance. Everybody say deliverance. deliverance. Now check this out. Abundance is my destination. Confidence is how I walk. And deliverance is God's part of the partnership. Because you can't deliver yourself. And the journey from here to abundance is a tough one. Jesus himself said, if they came to kill me, what do you think they're going to do to you? We're just like lackeys compared to Jesus, right? We're just drones, minions. The fight is between the devil and the father. We're caught in the middle, right? So for sure, when you get married, your family's going to come under attack for sure from something outside from something inside does it matter what difference does it matter for sure we're going to go through troughs where we're almost broke or we are broke for sure we're going to go through valleys where we're our body we can't even picture making it through to january 1 much less seeing another 10 years but god has promises around deliverance that you're not gonna have to fight every fight on your own. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 32. He says, thou art my hiding place. I put it up today in the King James Version because when I was a kid, there was a little song that we learned around this verse. And so when I walk sometimes, I sing these words. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I love the idea of encompass, to compass me about. What's a compass? North? South? Do you know where you're at right now? <laughs> Together now. North, south, east. So that means when the devil comes at me from the south, he's coming at my back from my past. And God says, I've got your back. I'll deliver you from stuff coming from behind. When something's coming from the periphery, he's my hiding place. I get in, the, I get in you know, baby position, fetal position, and he's fighting the battle for me. When something's coming in the future, north, where I'm headed, he's helping me learn lessons. But again, I say, your future's not a fate that's going to be thrust on you. You're going to have to be a partnership with God. You're going to have to fight for your future. <clears throat> I heard a guy say one time, first time I heard it, I thought he was an idiot. The second time I heard it, I thought he was a genius. <laughs> and that God's, he said, God's system is set up so that your survival is predicated on drawing closer to him. You're gonna need him. You're gonna need him. You don't have to have perfect attendance. And this is just a building, this gathering is the body of Christ, not the building. But we come together to encourage one another to get closer to Him, right? And a lot of church, we, we have a nice community here, don't we? We have community, I hope we have community. But I think it's interesting that so many churches sell their church based on community. <clears throat> you notice I don't do that. I believe it's important to have community, but you can have community at any bar. So. Uh, what makes this place unique is not that you can have community here because that can happen. What makes this place unique is we, we're Jesus people. And we say not just I need you, but I need him. And if you need him and I need him, why don't we do that together? Right? So, 
We need each other. Anyway, I'm out of time. We're going to close with one more worship song. If you would stand and feel free to lead out. But while we're doing this last worship song, the ushers are going to come. And if you have it in your heart or in your budget to do $58 this month to help us get this new foundation launched, I've got some cool updates to give you about it one of these days, but I can, Dyrell is already doing a great job. You should know that. And uh, next year, I'm believing, we're going to have lots of grants to pay for it, but we're going to plant the seed. So anyway, if you can, give. And uh, let's worship together. Come on, lift your voice, lift your hands. What an incredible message. I'm so happy you were able to join us. To find out all the things that are going on at Our Church, go ahead and head over to our website at ourchurch.us.